name's Jack. I'm the Kid Conservationist. I'm here today to read you this book, Born in the Wild, about baby mammals and their parents. So let's get started. I'm so excited to read this to you. Born in the Wild, Baby Mammals and Their Parents by Lita Judge. A baby is born. Polar bear cubs arrive tiny, blind, and nearly hairless. They may grow to weigh over 900 pounds, but at birth they are no bigger than squirrels. The cubs sleep and stay warm against their mother's fur. In a few months, they'll be big enough to explore the world outside their den. Other babies look like adults and are not ready to run. A giraffe calf is born in open country where lions prowl. After some shaky stumbles, she wobbles to her feet. Within hours, she may need to sprint from danger. The baby is hungry. All mammals begin life nursing on their mother's milk. Grizzly bear cubs nurse for several months before they start eating grasses, berries, insects, and a little meat. But they won't be weaned from their mother's rich milk for two or three years. Wolf pups grow tiny teeth in their first three weeks, but meat is tough, so the pups rely on adult chewing and regurgitating it. Within two months, the pups will have adult teeth and can eat meat brought back to the den. A two-week-old guanaco calf begins to eat a little grass. Over the next few months, she will depend less and less on her mother's milk until she is weaned entirely. The baby needs protection. Mammals are born small and defenseless. They need to be kept safe from danger. In his first few days, a white-tailed deer fawn is too wobbly and frail to run, so he hides by staying perfectly still. His mother comes back to nurse him occasionally, but most of the time she stays away so hungry predators don't find him. A mother panda protects her cubs by cradling him to her chest. For several days after he is born, she won't even put him down to eat or drink. It will be months before he is strong enough to support his own weight. Until then, he depends on his mother to hold him safe. A musk ox calf is strong enough to endure harsh arctic storms, but she is defenseless against hungry wolves. With sharp horns, snorts, and stamps, the entire herd forms a tight, protective circle around the little one, guarding against attacks. The baby needs shelter. Animals need to be protected from rain, wind, and snow, and shaded from hot sun. Young western harvest mice, called pinkies, grow quickly in their nests their mothers weave with grass and downy plants. Badger cubs stay sheltered with their mothers in the burrow she digs underground. A litter of raccoon kits shares a crowded home high in a hollow tree. Within weeks, they will grow big enough to begin to explore. The baby needs to move. A newborn mammal might need to keep up with his mother as she searches for food or flees from danger. Eastern gray kangaroos are marsupials. The baby, called a joey, is protected and carried by his mother in a special pouch. Wherever she goes, he goes too. Virginia opossums are also marsupials, but there are so many joeys in this family, they soon outgrow their mother's pouch. They cling to her back while she roams about. Hold on tight. A plain zebra colt is born with long, wobbly legs that soon grow strong. Within hours, he can leap and run from predators that stalk his herd. The baby is part of a family. Animal families can be large or small. A mother hippopotamus gives birth to a single calf. Soon after birth, the pair joins other females and their babies. The group is called a school, and together the mothers protect their calves from lions and other predators. Red fox kits grow up with several siblings. A mother fox usually has a litter of four to six kits, sometimes more. The father fox brings food back to the den and helps protect them. Only two to four pups join a meerkat family called a mob each year. Parents, older siblings, cousins, aunts, and uncles all protect and teach them. The baby needs to be caressed and groomed. To grow healthy, newborns need stimulation and attention. Baby cougars cuddle close to their mother. 
She grooms her cubs tenderly and sleeps curled around them, keeping them safe and warm. A chimpanzee infant is inseparable from her mother, but other female chimps and their youngsters also form strong bonds with the new baby, touching, holding hands, and playing with the little one. This nurturing will ensure she becomes a successful member of their community. A newborn elephant calf gets lots of reassurance from her mothers, aunts, and grandmothers. The family welcomes the calf by touching her with their trunks as if to say, are you okay? The baby grows strong through play. Youngsters build grown-up skills by jumping, chasing, and roughhousing. Ring-tailed lemur infants are curious and eager to explore. They hop as if their legs were made of springs. Soon they'll be nimble enough to leap through the trees. Stalk, run, quick attack! Blind parents are tolerant of their cubs' games of hunt and chase. The cubs will need these skills to survive. Pushing and shoving, mountain goat kids play King of the Rock. This may be fun, but mock battles also prepare young billies to compete for mates when they become adults. The baby learns. Young mammals must be taught to find food and be alert for danger if they are to survive adulthood. <coughs> a mother pika screams in alarm as a hawk flies overhead. Her youngsters learn that hawks are dangerous. They race back to their dens. Before he can swim, a sea otter pup watches his mother. She teaches him to swim and dive, to find clams and urchins for food, and to crack open tough shells with a rock. It takes a young orangutan at least 10 years to discover all he needs to know. As he grows up, his mother shows him where to find food, how to do more complicated things, like using sticks for tools, and even how to build a sleeping nest of leafy branches in the trees. Kids, joeys, Cubs and colts. Every baby mammal needs gentle care and teaching, just like you. The end. I hope you enjoyed Born in the Wild, Baby Mammals and Their Parents. At the end here, there's so much more facts and information on the animals included in this book. I want you to go back in this video and find which of these animals was your favorite. When you do, I want you to look up more information on them. Are they endangered? How many are left? Where do they live? How long do they stay with their parents? The more we know, the more we care. And these animals need our help and care to survive. This has been another book reading by the Kid Conservationist. If you'd like to check out my other book readings, they'll be on screen right here. I hope you enjoyed and have a great day.